in 2012, when I was 40 years old, I finally found out that I have osteogenesis imperfecta type 4. My whole life I broke and I didn't know what was going on. So that's why my fight for this is so strong. OI represents a fascinating scientific challenge. The underlying causes of osteogenesis imperfecta are important to understand not only so that we can do a better job with the disease, but it helps us understand how bone works in general. I'm particularly interested in this study because we just don't have good ways to help people with OI and to reduce their burden of fracture. At Oregon Health and Science University, we've been involved in research involving metabolic bone disease for many years. We've got lots of experience in undertaking clinical trials, as well as in caring for people with metabolic bone disease. I think that a lot of us are afraid all the time, but I think you can either let that rule you, or you can get used to being afraid all the time, so fear's not that scary anymore, and you can do something. Even if this medicine doesn't work, the data from it could help for another medicine to work, and I think in the end, it's worth it. You could be healthier, and you could maybe even conquer a fear in, in that time, and I think just doing that is worth it. My experience has been amazing. When I came out of the elevators, there is the project coordinator, Mona, and she's like standing there. She goes, are you Erica? And I was like, yeah, that's me. And I just felt like it was so like warm, you know, it was such an inviting experience. As the study coordinator, I am the first point of contact for the participants. The participant comes in once a month for 12 months. I am with them every step of the way throughout the study. I also try to coordinate their visit such that they have a smooth and safe trip. As soon as I arrived, I get out of the airport and I get a text on my cell phone saying, your driver Brian has arrived in stall three. And so I walk over, it was like first class service. And when I checked into the hotel, uh, the staff is just so nice. At the baseline visit, the participants have a longer visit, which includes audiology, labs, x-rays, DEXA, and HRP QCT. Subsequent visits are much shorter. They involve an infusion, which takes about an hour, and also a short physical exam with Dr. Orwell. So this trial is designed to do a number of important things. First, it's to help us understand whether the drug really is effective in increasing the amount of bone formation and strengthening the bone that's present in people with OI. Second, it's designed to allow us to decide which dose of the drug is most appropriate for the treatment of OI. And finally, it's to make sure that the drug is safe. The drug we're interested in is a monoclonal antibody to a protein that's very important for bone formation called sclerostin. And when we inhibit sclerostin with the monoclonal antibody, it results in a stimulation of new bone formation. I manage, but it would still be nice to be in less pain. It would be nice to be like, I don't have to cancel plans because I'm not broken this week. I want to go dancing. I want to be able to go out with friends, and I want to dance for hours. And I want to just, I don't know, I want to do things that 21-year-olds are supposed to be doing. I want to go out on random adventures and not feel like, today I have to cancel because my leg hurts too much and my hip hurts too much. I want to finish school and I want to write and I really want to dance. I hope that we can develop a new therapy for OI that reduces the risk of fracture. OI is a rare disease. There is insufficient data about what therapies might be effective, and it would be tremendously useful for patients with OI if we could confidently identify a drug that reduced their fracture risk.